welcome to my channel pharma companion today we'll discuss about the topic uv visible spectrophotometer earlier we have already discussed about uv visible spectroscopy so now let's do the basic intro uv visible spectroscopy refers to the absorption spectroscopy or reflecting spectroscopy in the uv visible spectral region it means that when a beam of uh, ultra violet light is passed through a sample some of the light gets absorbed and some light gets transmitted and the amount of the transmitted light is measured in the uv visible spectroscopy and the analyte quantity and its quality can be determined by this spectroscopy and also the uv visible spectroscopy uh, wavelength spans from 200 to 800 nanometer as shown in this image and these are the basic instruments used in the UV visible spectrophotometer, the source of light, then the dispersion device or monochromator, the sample cells, and the detector and recording system. So, let's begin it. Instrumentation of UV visible spectrophotometer. The first one is radiation source. For the radiation source, we use five type of five types of lamp. The first one is tungsten lamp. Tungsten lamp is like an electric bulb. It consists of a tungsten filament that is heated electrically and on heating it emits short wavelength intensity as low than uh, 350 nanometer it is easy to use and is robust and is stable it looks like this so the second one is hydrogen discharge lamp in which hydrogen gas is stored under high pressure and reacted with the electrons to produce uv visible spectra and this uv visible spectra is broad range broadband and it is produced in continuum and it can covers the reach of 3500 to 1200 angstrom. The right one is the hydrogen lamp and this is the deuterium lamp. In deuterium lamp this type is same as the hydrogen lamp but in the hydrogen's place deuterium gas is used and it is three times more powerful than the hydrogen lamp and it is also expensive and it produces increased intensity of UV radiation and used for higher radiation studies. The third lamp, fourth lamp used in this is xenon discharge lamp in which xenon gas is stored and at high temperature up from 10 to 30 atmospheric pressure and it consists of two electrodes by applying low voltage in it UV light is produced which is more than the intensity of hydrogen lamp. The fifth one radiation source is mercury arc lamp in which mercury vapor is stored under high pressure and an electrical discharge produces UV spectra and it is not used for continuous study and these are also expensive lamps second one is the dispersing material also known as the monochromator monochromator consists of the three parts entry slit from which the radiation enters the polychromatic light enters second one is dispersing material from the polychromatic uh, where the pro polychromatic light actually disperses into its single components and third one is ex exit sl slit from which the monochromatic light that we require the wavelength of light that we require exits from the slit and passes on to the sample the dispersing material is made up of the prisms or the metal grating prisms are made up of fused silica and quartz glass is not used for uh, manufacture of the prisms because glass absorbs some amount of uh, UV radiation gratings may be used uh, by using metal plates over which silica is coated or by arranging set of prisms. The third instrument is sample cell. For the sampling of substance whose UV absorbance has to be determined, the sample cells are made up of small cuboidal cubits that are made up of quartz or fused silica. The property of sample cells should be such that they should be inert and they should not react with the sample. And also the cuvet should not absorb any UV radiation by itself. Match cells are used in the double beam spectrophotometer where standard and test are studied. These uh, different match cells are used so that absorbance would not differ between the standard and the test substance. Fourth instrument used is detector. The detector for the UV light measurement consists of first barrier layer cell. Mean first type is barrier layer cell, also called as photovoltaic cell, 
in which there are three layers the topmost layer consists of silver or gold plating under which a selenium semiconductor is coated and the bottom layer consists of iron or copper a metal base and this layer is uh, connected with the circuit when light falls on the topmost layer of silver or gold uh, there occurs a uh, conductivity difference or electric difference between the topmost layer and the bottom layer due to this electric difference the electrons flow from the iron or copper layer towards the circuit and these electrons are measured and if the ex external circuit has low slow resistance then the electrical current produced will be directly proportional to the amount of light falling on the detector second type of cell is photocell detector photocell consists of a glass cylinder or tube inside which a highly sensitive cathode is placed and beside it anode is placed when light enters to the inside the glass and hits this highly sensitive cathode the electrons are generated from the cathode and move towards the anode and are received by the circuit these electrons are measured and the current produced is directly proportional to the measure of the radiation photocell detectors are most more sensitive than the barrier layer cell and have high degree of amplification and the window is made up of the quartz or fused silica the third type of uh, detector is photo multiplier tube it consists of a long cylinder inside which is a photo cathode and when uv light falls the electrons are emitted from the photo cathode it also consists many number of dynodes which are made up of beryllium copper cesium or antimony and when photo cathode generates electrons these electrons are carried through the dynodes and from one to another the electrons multiply over a wide range it means that if one photon hits the photo cathode then 10 power 6 electrons are generated at the end so the procedure basically includes that uh, when light photon hits here on the left side of the photo cathode then electron is generated and these electrons are captured by the uh, dynodes these electrons move to different dy dynodes and when they move they generate other electrons from the dynodes and by continuously multiplying like this many amount of electrons are generated for one quantum of light approximately 10 power 6 electrons are generated so this is the working of so the five fifth instrument in this is recording system for the recording of uv transmitted light a recorder pen uh, records the graphs and this uv spectrum shows the absorbance and transmittance of uv light at specific wavelengths this is the general uv visible spectrophotometer uh, which is uh, automatically connected to the uh, desktop or computer this 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 one shown in the image has its own screen so it displays the graph by itself the next thing is choice of solvent which solvent should be used when UV visible spectrophotometer is operated when the sampling of substance should be done the sample used should be less polar it should not absorb any UV radiation uh, basically the most commonly uh, solvent used is ethanol which is 95% pure because ethanol doesn't absorb any radiation more than 210 nanometer some other solvents used that are transparent above 210 nanometer are n-hexane, cyclohexane, methanol, water and ether other solvents like benzene, chloroform and carbon tetrachloride are not used because they absorb 240 to 280 nanometer range these are the reference which I referred for making this slide thank you so much for watching and please do subscribe my channel and like the videos thank you